Hello guys and welcome back to Reading Club. Today I'm going to read you The 78 Story Treehouse, the last chapter. Chapter 13, the last chapter. We get back to the treehouse and sit on the couch. So what do we do now, I say. I don't know, says Terry. What did it used to do before we were about to be movie stars? Beats me, I say. We used to make books together, says Jill. You wrote the words, Andy and Terry. You drew the pictures. The video phone rings. Ring, ring, ring. Uh-oh, I say. That'll be Mr. Big Nose. He's probably heard about the movie. He's not going to be happy. You answer it, Andy, says Terry. I'm not answering it. I say I'm scared. Me too, says Terry. Let's hide behind the couch. Jill sighs. I'll do it, she says. Jill answers the video phone, and Mr. Big Nose's face fills the screen. He looks bigger and crosser than ever. Where's Andy and Terry? He yells. They're hiding behind the couch, says Jill. I'm not surprised, says Mr. Big Nose. Yes, yells Mr. Big Nose. I hope those clones ruined the movie. It wasn't their fault, says Jill. It was the cows. They copied all the ideas and made their own movie. Cows, yells Mr. Big Nose. I jump up. Yes, I say cows, but they were not ordinary cows. They were spy cows. I tried to warn everybody, but no one would listen to me, not even Terry. He jumps up from behind the couch. That's not fair, Andy, he says. You were covered in prickles and had a cow pad on your head. You can't blame us for thinking it was just another one of your crazy schemes to trick the movie, like the scribbling, the flying plates, and the ad invasion. What? yells Mr. Big Nose. You tried to wreck the movie? No, I say I tried to save the movie. The plates and the scribbletorium explosion were both accidents. And I tried to stop the Andes, but they won't listen to me either. And by the way, I also practically saved the entire planet from being impuddled by a giant puddle. That's enough, said, yeah, says Mr. Big Nose. This whole explanation is the most ridiculous thing I ever heard. In fact, it's so ridiculous it sounds like the plot of one of your books. Speaking of which, if I can't have a movie, then I'll have a book instead by midnight tonight, without fail, or else. Goodbye. Well, this is Terry, that all seemed to work out quite nicely. Yeah, I say, except that we've got to write a book by midnight. No problem, says Terry. The night is... Yes. Hang on, wait a minute, wait another minute. Hang on, just one more minute. Do you mean midnight tonight? Yes, says Jill, midnight tonight. Big problem, says Terry. That's hardly any time at all, and we don't even have an idea for a book because we've been too busy with the movie. That's it. I say we'll write a book about making the movie. Mr. Big knows that it was a ridiculous story, so it's perfect. I mean, we're going to write a book about writing a book about making a movie about writing a book, says Terry. That sounds complicated. That's because it is, I say. You better get started before it gets any more complicated. But what about the cows, says Terry? Won't they just steal all our ideas and bring out the book before us? No, of course not. I said, cows can't write books. Good point, says Terry. Why cows can't write books? Stupid cow hooves. They don't have hands. I'm coming second. I'm winning. They get distracted by their favorite sport, auto racing. They'd rather be out dancing. They are too busy planning a moon landing. Okay, says so Terry, we'll call it the book of the book of the movie of the book. I'm not sure about that. I said, how about the 78 story train house? It'll be easier for our readers to remember. Good thinking, Andy, says Terry. Let's get to work. I remember that. I don't remember that. I don't think I was there. Well, that never happened. Now, that's just something you made up. Grr. Huh, never know. Oh, now I do remember that, finally. It's action-packed, says Terry, our best yet. Just one question. What is it, I say? How are we going to get it to Mr. Big Nose on time? I'm not sure, I say. Well, you need to think of something fast because it's five minutes to midnight. 
Look, says Joe, the giant unhatched egg is cracking. It must be about to hatch. I wonder what it'll be, says Terry. I hope it's not a cow. Don't worry, says Joe. Cows don't hatch from eggs. But birds do. I say maybe it'll be a really fast one, like a supersonic sparrow or a full injected falcon. And he could deliver our book for us. It's a tortoise, says Joe. Oh, great, I say. Just what we don't need. One of the slowest animals in the world. A tortoise isn't going to be any help us at all. I wouldn't be so sure about that. Does so she'll see this engine and the exhaust pipes coming out of his shell? If I'm not mistaken, it's a turbo tortoise, one of the fastest animals in the world. The fastest and slowest animals in the world. Slowest, a ninja snail, a block of wood, a cheetah with four broken legs, a sloth, an elephant on a scooter being chased by a mouth, mouse, a cow on a bicycle, a ninja snail on a skateboard, a penguin being chased by the police, an octopus on roller skates, a monkey on a wire. I'm not a monkey, I'm a gibbon, a cow and a fairy. Fastest, a turbo tortoise. We put the manuscript in the turbo tortoise's mouth and Jill explains where we need it delivered. The tortoise fires up and takes off faster than a speeding bullet driving a fer Ferrari. I am made of green trees, cheesy, cheesy, cheese. He's not the moon, I'm the real moon. No, I am, I am me. I am the real moon. Is it time for me to rise yet? Big nose. Mission accomplished, says Terry, peering through our night telescope as the turbo tortoise crashed through our night crashes through Mr. Big Nose's office window. It's 11.59 p.m. and 90... Sorry. It's 11.59 p.m. and 59 seconds. The turbo tortoise has delivered the book with one second to spare. Smash BNB. Yay, I say, grabbing Terry's hand and Jill's hand and rising them in triumph. Meow, squawk, moo, cock, a doodle doo, honk, oink, nay, squawk, roar, breath. Uh oh, says Jill looking at her intergalactic space animal rescue service emergency pager. A gorilla has crash landed a banana rocket on planet Kong. See you both later. I'm sorry the cows stole your movie, but your book is great. Much better than a silly old movie any day. Well, that was a fun day. So, Terry, what are we going to do tomorrow? I'll tell you what you're going to do, says a voice behind us. We turn in to see a mysterious woman wearing a brightly colored headscarf large golden earrings and a necklace made of gold coins. She's holding a crystal ball in her hand. Who are you? I say, I am that I'm know-it-all. She says, I know all and see all, and I already know that you are going to build me a level where I can set up my fortune telling tent and end my wandering ways. What a good idea, sister. It'll be great to have a full-time fortune teller. Then we'll always know what's going to happen next. Maybe we can build some other new levels while we're at it. I know you're going to do that as well, says Madame Know It All. Wow, I say. I knew you were going to say that, too, she says. What's going to happen next, Esther? Nothing, she says, because it's the end of the book. I knew that, I say. I knew it first, says Madame Know It All. The end. The 78 Story Trees. Well, 
guys, that's the end of this book. I hope you enjoyed it. Enjoyed the 78th Story Tree House. And tomorrow, I'm going to start a new book. It's called The 91 Story Tree House. I wonder what book it'll be. And I'll see you tomorrow starting the new book. Bye, everybody.